Hello and welcome to a second Shader Graph API tutorial. Last time we implemented our first custom node, which calculates the element sum of a vector 3. This time we want to implement a more general solution, so that we are not only able to calculate the sum of a vector 3, but of a vector 1, 2, 3 and 4, all with the same node. For that we will use dynamic dimension vectors. Step 1. Abstract material nodes. In the last tutorial we created a subclass of code function node. A code function node is nothing else than a subclass of an abstract material node and provides a lot of useful stuff and shortcuts in order to implement new nodes fast and without much effort. Sadly, in some cases you need access to the low level functions provided by the abstract material node that are hidden by the code function node. So when we add the new script called vector element sum node, we inherit from abstract material node this time. We also realize the i generates body code interface since our node will generate shader code. We are forced to implement the generate node code method. That's the basic structure. Step 2. Slot configuration. Before we continue with the setup of the slots, we add a constructor. There we set the name to vector element sum and call update node after deserialization. We'll overwrite this method in a second where we are doing the slot configuration. Before we do that, we specify some constants an ID for the input slot an ID for the output slot, a name for the input slot and a name for the output slot. Now we must overwrite update node after deserialization. For adding the input slot, call add slot and pass a new dynamic vector material slot. This is the input slot, so we pass the input ID and slot name. Specify it as an input slot and initialize it with zero. We do the same with the output slot. So we call add slot and pass a new vector1 material slot with the output ID and name. Output slot type and zero for the default value. Lastly, we call remove slots name not matching and pass both IDs which removes all slots different to those IDs. This can happen when you change the ID and recompile. Step 3. Shader code. In the last step we need to generate the node code within the generate node code method. Firstly we access the input value. Since we are using a dynamic dimension vector, the actual input type can vary. We can find out the number of dimensions by passing the concrete type of the input slot to the get channel count of the slot value helper. And lastly, we specify a temporary variable for the shader code. If everything goes right, we get an input channel number greater than zero. The shader code starts with the assignment of the output variable. Precision is defined within the abstract material node and returns fixed for 11-bit, half for 16-bit and float for 32-bit precision. Then we loop through the channels and sum up the vector elements. Input.x plus y plus c plus w, depending on the vector type. For readability reasons, we can declare a static read-only dictionary mapping the channel index to the responding vector element name. Zero maps to x, one maps to y, etc. We must get rid of the last plus and end with a semicolon. In the error case, when channel count returns 0, we set the output value to 0. In the final line, we pass the shader code to the shader generator. 
Step 4. Inspect the generated code. Ok, let's have a look if our node generates the correct shader code. To be able to inspect the generated code, we need to override has preview and return true. Create a new unlit shader graph and open it. Right click on an empty space and select create node. Select math, vector, vector element sum. Now let's create all types of vectors. Vector 1, 2, 3 and 4. As you can see, depending on which vector we connect to our node, the type of the input slot changes. Right click on our element sum node. Select copy shader and paste the code into notepad++. The node generates different code for each type of vector. Cool, we are done. Thank you very much for watching. Did you like the video? Then please support us on Patreon and join our weekly newsletter. I want to say thank you to our supportive patrons. A very special thanks to Eric and a special thanks to Simon Zineder, David Heinzel, Melina Brunner, Robert Hartl, Erich Gangel, Reinhard Bauer and Teresa. Thank you very much and have a nice day. It's your Sensei.